I just got finished writing an extreme hardship application. I'm gonna drop this video and go write another one. So I just wanted to share a tip that I think is important for those of you out there maybe doing provisional waivers like the 601A, thinking about 601s, thinking about 212 waivers for misrepresentation, fraud, uh, for criminal uh, convictions that, that might otherwise make you inadmissible and that uh, are waivable, or that you even might be thinking about something like a 42B where it's not necessarily an extreme hardship or an extreme and exceptional hardship analysis, might be more uh, of an equities balancing. Um, but the idea is, is the same, uh, the one that I wanna discuss. So let's talk about it after the break. Hi everybody, this is Damon DeNoble. This is Law Great, our channel on Frontier Tech Law. So I'm writing a 601A provisional waiver. That is a waiver under INA section 212AB95. That last five looks like a V. If you're Googling it, it'll be here under the screen. And the idea is that if a US citizen or legal permanent resident spouse or parent is filing a petition for their immediate relative, and that relative has one unlawful entry, not more, then they can have that waived, right? But to have it waived, they have to show extreme hardship. Extreme hardship is one of two variants of hardship under US immigration laws. The other is exceptional and extremely unusual hardship. So extreme hardship and exceptional and extremely unusual hardship. So these two standards. The extreme hardship is a lesser standard than the exceptional and extremely unusual hardship standard. So the extreme hardship standard is a less rigorous standard than the exceptional and extremely unusual standard. And that's the one we use for the 601A waiver. But if you're listening to this video and you're having to do a waiver that does have an exceptional and extremely unusual standard, this will also apply to you. This will apply to you because whatever standard you're having to file a waiver under, it's going to apply to a relative, meaning that we have to show extreme hardship to a particular relative. Again, for the 601A waiver, it is the spouse or parent who has legal permanent resident or US citizen status. For other waivers, it's going to apply to a different category of folks. And so what I wanna talk about today is how do you frame the story the correct way, right? What do I mean by that? When you're trying to frame why a waiver should be granted on the basis of extreme or exceptional and extremely unusual hardship, you have to tell a story about the hardship that would be imposed on another person if the applicant for that waiver is removed from the country or not offered some other form of immigration relief because, because that person might already be in removal proceedings. One of the things we have to consider in the 601A provisional waiver is which future are we writing about? Are we writing about a future where the applicant for that waiver leaves to their home country and their US citizen, legal permanent resident, spouse or parent comes with them or the person leaves and their LPR or USC spouse or parent stays in the United States. It's not always an obvious choice. And oftentimes I will write an early draft uh, of a 601A or even a 601 waiver. And um, I end up changing the perspective or rather the possible future that I'm writing about. So I'll change the scenario, you know, from one where the spouse has left with the applicant to the home country to one where the spouse stays in the country. And why, why do I do that? I do that because it's not enough uh, to choose the scenario that is clearly harder, right? You also have to choose the scenario that is realistic and reasonable in, in, in some sense of the word. What do I mean by that? Let's say, you have an applicant for the waiver and their spouse is a successful businesswoman in the United States that runs something like a construction company. That woman also has an elderly mother, um, three children who are going to school uh, and is in all ways that are important kind of embedded in the community. Maybe she also has a primary care physician that she's been with for years and years. If we try to say that when the spouse is, uh, let's say, uh, removed back to Atlantis, right? Uh, and made up an imaginary country. If we try to say that 
want that that spouse is that the uh, person with the business and the kids and, and the strong family ties in the US is going to leave with them to Atlantis. We have to be in a position to say why, like why is that the better of the two options? It's not enough to create a romantic link to say, well, they love each other, so they wanna keep the family together, so they're going to go. We, we also have to think through what the opportunities would be for that spouse, again, who's a successful businesswoman in the US, would be in Atlantis. And we have to make the case that that move itself would be realistic. Indeed, in cases like this, where there are very strong family ties in the US, uh, you know, you strongly need to consider uh, the opposite scenario. Like, what are the actual hardships if the person makes the much more likely choice of staying in the US while their spouse um, is removed and maybe goes through a waiting period to become eligible for a visa in the future? So that's, that's really the, the crux of a lot of these extreme hardship or exceptional and extremely unusual hardship waivers, you have to decide on a future scenario and be able to justify it in a way that's not fanciful, okay? Because clearly, giving up your whole life in the United States, if you're the USC or LPR spouse or parent or other qualifying relative, is very difficult and is going to take an early lead just by the fact that you're having to move your entire life to another country, it's gonna take an early lead in the extreme hardship analysis. But that early lead, again, has to be justified. You have to have a reason for it. So that's my tip for today. Super, super easy. When you're writing these, well, super easy to think about anyway. So when you're writing these, when you're thinking about them, maybe you're working with an advocate or a lawyer, keep in mind that you still have to have a reasonable explanation for the choice you would be making if your uh, you know, loved one is, is removed and you are the qualifying relative or vice versa, if you're the one that's, uh, if you're the applicant and you're, you're claiming that your qualifying relative would, would come with you. You have to make a reasonable choice and um, you know, ultimately, it might not even be a decision that you can make until you get through a draft of, of whatever waiver that you're writing, because uh, as you write and develop, uh, you get a better sense, in my experience, of what's actually persuasive, what sounds reasonable, and what's stronger uh, within the context of, of everything in your life. So that's my tip. If you've made it this far, that means you like me. Go ahead and subscribe, hit the notification button, and stick around for the next video.